Good evening. How are you? Welcome along to the Russia and Japan show with just myself this evening. It's good to be here. Please like, please subscribe before we go any further. I've been awake since quarter to four this morning because I've been up at Cheltenham for the last few days, so I'm struggling. But can't pass up an opportunity to speak about the weirdness of tonight. What a strange evening. Um, like I say, please like, subscribe before we go any further. It's good to be with you. Um, yeah. Uh, wow. Okay, so Chelsea 3, Arsenal 1. That was the final score. Couple of things to discuss. Um, Sockgate 1, Lauren James 2. Um, title race 3. Um, it, it does feel like it's been a bit of a tough old night at the office for the Gunners and a number of things going wrong. And it starts with half hour before kickoff, which was due to be about seven o'clock. And it was pushed back because Arsenal had the wrong colour of socks with them. Now, there is actual laws about the socks that you wear. The team's the team kits are submitted uh, a couple of weeks before the games happen. And it turns out when they were doing the warm-up, Arsenal had their white socks on with the, the red flash, the lightning bolt. And um, it turns out they clashed with Chelsea's white socks. So, complete error. It turns out then Arsenal had to go across to the Chelsea Super Shop, the mega store at Stamford Bridge, and get Chelsea socks and tape up the Chelsea badge. I mean, I can't blame them for losing. I've watched all the Poets match. I've watched Jonas, Kim Little, Lauren James, Erin Cuthbert, Emma Hayes, all in the post match. And everybody's been completely sound about sock game because they're all professionals. But wearing Chelsea socks when you're in an Arsenal kit must be in your head. I mean, it just has to. It's just simply incredible that this has gone wrong. Now, unfortunately, I think this does come down to a kit person error. Something's gone wrong with the kit person. The wrong socks have been submitted. They shouldn't have been wearing the white socks. So instead, they had to wear the Chelsea away so socks from the superstore. It's it's um, it's bad. It, it looks embarrassing. It's not the best for Arsenal, right? Not the best start to the game at Stamford Bridge. On top of that, 34,000 fans at Stamford Bridge tonight and Chelsea come out firing. Lauren James put on a Ballon d'Or performance tonight. It was simply sensational. Absolutely sensational stuff from her. And it's been described as a playground. That's what she does. She's just on the playground. She's having fun. Emma Hayes said post-match, let her go. Let her be free. She can play at the playground whenever the hell she wants. Um, uh, incredible performance there from Chelsea. Arsenal, just not not there tonight. Lacey Russo on the bench. Sabrina D'Angelo, should she have started in goal over Manuel Zinsberger? A number of things to discuss. I've had a look around. I see the vlogs. I see the, the tweets. Um... I see the Instagram comments and I can see Manuela Zinsberger getting a lot of heat tonight. A bad first half performance, but second half performance, she had a very, very good game. So credit to her for turning that around. It must be difficult when you're in that situation at Stamford Bridge. Um, defensively, Arsenal were off. A, a really poor night defensively for Lotta Wibben Moy and Leah Williamson. Probably Leah Williamson getting up to scratch uh, with everything, probably still trying to get full match fitness. And also Chelsea were just running riot. Simply the midfield also get a lot of crit criticism tonight um, from the analysis on Sky. You know, sometimes that's where the games can be seen or won or lost sometimes. Um, and the difference in Chelsea's midfield compared to Arsenal's was, was up for criticism. I think Arsenal has a terrific midfield of such seasoned, experienced players, but tonight it wasn't enough. And going forward, Chelsea were clinical, and that is down to Lauren James and Nuskin and um, Canred right, and she had a great game. The Chelsea actually looking at that that squad that's starting to live in tonight. It's a squad full of superstars. And Emma Hayes comes out and says, we're depleted, we're a depleted squad. They play each other in two weeks' time in the Conti Cup final. So a lot of things have to change in order for 
Arsenal to retain the Conte Cup because we know we know they can do that. We we absolutely know that they can do that. I have no doubt about that. It can be a very different game in two weeks' time. Um, but a Chelsea looked electric. Maybe it was the atmosphere. Maybe it was Saltgate that they were already in their heads. Um, but it, it certainly needs to change come the end of the month if Arsenal want to win. I watched the post-match interviews, as I said there earlier on. I thought tactical got a mention a lot in post-match from the Arsenal player. Um, Kim Little, the captain, had done the post-match interview tactical Tactical come up a couple of times that things weren't going according to plan. Jonas Deval's interview I thought was quite interesting because the chewing gum I think was a l not a great look, not a great look. Um, chewing gum like that when actually you're uh, against the ropes I think shows almost that you're being a little bit. Meh. Um, and that's uh, for me that didn't that didn't look good in the post match um, interview with Jonas Deval. Um, it looks like Arsenal are out of the title race because. I mean, you're now relying on Chelsea and Manchester City to drop points. Manchester City now are only focusing on the league and they look good, but they've dropped out of the last two cup competitions in quick succession that they'll be hunting if they can go on and win the league. Chelsea are top and Arsenal are now six points off the top. They've dropped points to West Ham, Liverpool, Spurs and now Chelsea. So across the board, in the table, it's not been good enough from Arsenal this season. Um, so it looks like they have all but ruled themselves out of the title race tonight. Chelsea looked absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, my, I thought Lauren was just incredible to watch. It's like watching a dancer just glide over the stage. Uh, just stunning, stunning. I don't know if that's anything we can compare it to. I don't know if it's just me because I was a dancer for a long time. Um but yeah, but unbelievable. Um, and for me, Sockgate is the high, just this like weird highlight of the night. Not a highlight, it's a low light for Arsenal. But as if that can't get in your head, of course it's going to get in your head. That's such a problem. But as Emma Hayes says, you know, apparently she spoke to Jonas in the tunnel, said, I wish I'd brought extra socks. I'd love to help you out. You don't need this tonight. The kit people don't need this tonight. Um so as if Chelsea were looking to try and help them out. Um, fascinating, fascinating stuff. Cannot believe that's happened. I thought I was going to come on tonight maybe and do a last kind of half of the game live, talk about the whole player relationship, management player relationship type thing. Um, but it's not great took over um, quite an interesting game. You can let me know your thoughts uh, going forward. Let's be kinder shall we? Uh, I've seen some of the old Instagram comments going around and they're not they're not too kind to some players and that's that's not on. Um, so you can let me know your thoughts. Is it Chelsea? They're still in for the quad. As Erin Cuthbert so eloquently put in her post-match, nothing is won in March. They've got a quadruple hunt and there's still nothing there. That is the thing for Chelsea. They're in all four competitions but nothing is set in stone. For Arsenal, is it over? What does this mean for the future? And they have to go and do the business on the 31st of March in the Conte Cup final. And what about Manchester City? Where do they lie in all of this? Let me know your thoughts. Jump in the comments, give me a like, and I will see you back again here with Miss Rusha very, very soon. Bye.